Warning, this program may contain visuals that might offend sensitive viewers. Parental guidance is advised. Tonight on Cutting Edge, with gender identity under the spotlight, we we'll speak to two intersex activists who are challenging gender stereotypes and asking what is normal. My mom, every, she laughs about it. Like, you know, I used to look at you when you were playing and be like, yeah, these doctors, they, they just took the wrong tool. It was only then when he did the sonogram and then he said, I could not see, I can't see a uterus and I can't see ovaries. If you look at patients who are undergoing genital reconstructive surgeries for whatever reason, because they're not happening with their genitalia, it's about one in a thousand surgeries. I was angry at my parents. I was angry at the doctors. I was even so angry at God for letting it happen that they had to remove my penis. Dimakatsu Sibidi was born on the 1st of April 1984 at Baraguanath Hospital, a day her father Abram will never forget. I was drinking by the time I was one of the, I was drinking a lot by the time, but I, I, become, I just became sober as time goes on, saying, hey, what did I have? Did I send I have got a baby, child? His wife broke the news to him that all was not well with their baby by saying there was a change of name. She's not going to be Matsiji so anymore. We're going to call her Jimakatsu. I said, Jimakatsu, why are you saying now Jimakatsu? They called me, they said something that is surprising. The doctors explained to him that their baby was intersex. <laughs> I thought they are fooling me as an April Fool, April Fool. Now that she's grown up, Dimakatsu can smile about it all. Sometimes I feel like, you know, I'm sure when he was creating me, he had so much smiles and he say, no, they're not expecting this. Sometimes I feel like when he was doing, he was creating me, he was, he was feeling like that. I just asked myself, am, why God is he doing me? He wants me to be someone to be great or someone to be special. Even expectation from birth, people are expecting female or male. So it's either baby shower, it's either it's gonna be pink or blue. So what color would it be for Dimakato? It meant years in hospital for baby Dimakato as the doctors operated several times in an effort to assign a gender to her ambiguous genitalia. I stayed about six to seven years in Barakwanath. Um, my first operation was made to me, I think I was one year, six months, if not mistaken. And um, I used to obviously get pass out, you know, as I was growing um, during sometimes like, you know, my birthday or my mom's birthday. But when she had to go back to, you know, she had to cry, hey, mommy, daddy, now you leaving me there. The operations transformed her into a little girl on the advice of doctors. As we were expecting a, a girl. So that is why we decided, oh, we bought clothes, a girl, uh, babies, girls, clothes. Because the doctor said, told us that we don't have to force or take any de decision on what. Whatever we were expecting, we can carry on with that, but it automatically when she changes, we mustn't say why or we must just accept it. For close relatives and doctors, she was a curiosity. I knew my mom's friends or my cousin's mom's friends. They would 
obviously as they used to ask me to take off my pants and look at me what's happening there and i'll see people just leaving and laughing and i have to just take my pants you know just dress up and go back and play as time went by abram realized that perhaps they had made a mistake she would love to play with uh, not girls she would love to play sport a soccer you know Bicycle, you know, ladies, they don't, they don't like tolls. But she will, she, she was riding a bicycle very, very, very. I said, to oh. There was nothing different I was doing from the boys. Even I was doing it better. I love gardening. I will help my uncles while they're doing gardening. My, my dad while he's fixing his cars. You will ask me, hey, don't you buy me a gun or, you know, a a motor car, those cars, not the, do the, the, the baby dolls, no. Them now trying to make me this girl because there's a vagina that doctors created for me and trying to buy me dresses and all of that. And them realizing when I get home that, hey, I just want guns, I want soccer balls, I want marbles, you know. I just want all these boy stuff. And my mom, every, she laughs about it. Like, you know, I used to look at you when you were playing and be like, yeah, these doctors, they, they just took the wrong tool. She says growing up, she was very confused. I grew up thinking from the zero until maybe the age of 13, you're a tomboy. Until 14, you're a lesbian. Because I'm thinking maybe that's the phase where you trying to find yourself as a kid. And then when you get to high school, because you know, you start having feelings for somebody. And like so many other lesbian women, Dimakata faced discrimination. I remember I had to change directions coming back home. Um, transport used to drop us off by the corner with my sister and we had to walk up. So sometimes when I came back from soccer practice, there was a guy who used to wait for me. And he used to wait for me there. And he used to tell me that you, I'm gonna change you. You are a girl. And I used to be scared of him, and we were same age. So I used to change direction. Dima Kato's parents only broke the news when she turned 21. I was angry at my parents. I was angry at the doctors. I was even so angry at God for letting it happen that they had to remove my penis. Yeah. Dima Kato remembers also grappling for information when she discovered yeah. the truth. Yeah. Actually, there's no intersex in... Sitonga, Venda, Sitoana, Zulu, Sutu. I've Googled unless other person had found out. But with my research, I haven't. I just know only there's an intersex in English. During this time, a mentor was Sally Gross, who ran a Cape Town based organization for the intersex community. She's actually my heroine. I learned a lot about myself through her, through research and finding a lot about her. And she needed all the support she could get. And you find out most intersex babies, we are so very suicidal, even adults. We're always constantly thinking of, you always feel like you don't belong. You, you always want to take your life because you always want to fit in in everything, at work, at school, at home, with friends. You never are yourself. But how does Dimagato see herself? I'm something totally different. You know, why is it always gotta be something of a girl about a girl, a boy about a boy. Why can't they be just me? With Dimagato, it was obvious from birth that she was intersex. This is not the case for everybody. Sharon Rose Kumalo was born a normal baby girl by all appearances. Growing up in Lamludi was fun and easy. Just a normal black girl in Lamludi and had a lot of fun. I grew up in a family home with my, my gran who passed away in the year of 98, my grandfather and my aunts and uncles and then my mom. And then my mom got married. Uh, in the early 2000s to my stepdad who's now basically my dad and now I have a little brother who is 11. But in high school she never got her period. 
Growing up as a girl, um, by the time you get to like late primary school, you expect to start getting your period. And that for me never happened. And I went through to high school and that never happened. And then my mother would ask me like, maybe we should go and find out, go to the doctor and find out why you haven't gotten your period yet. And I never really, I guess, had that desire to go at that age. Also with that, my mother attributed, she's a nurse. So she attributed me not having a period early on to possibly, because I grew up quite thin. At age 21, they finally made a trip to the gynecologist. I thought that it'd be a simple thing. He'd do his physical exam and say, this is the medication you need to go on, or this is the surgery that we need to do for you to start having a period, and that sort of thing, and I never really understood why. And then it was only then when he did the sonogram, and then he said, I could not see, I can't see a uterus, and I can't see ovaries. She remembers it all full surreal. After the appointment walking to my mother's office, which was like, I think, five to seven k's away from the doctor, and I walked that, and I think I was just completely dazed. And I just knew where I was going, but I had so many thoughts going through my mind, like, is this really happening? Or you just feel like, is this some kind of a dream? Or, yeah. As a biotechnology student, she could understand the signs of what was happening. For me, I think, Looking back now, being a science student, um, I, I, I could understand the terms, but like I said, you never really think that you end up being the case study. Sharon says it was life-changing. Initially, at that moment, um, it, was, it, 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 it was just a shock and just actually going through that, because I mean, you expect that at a certain time, you'd, this would happen and then you'd get married, hopefully have kids and go through the, the normal, typical stage of life. She says her family was very supportive in helping her process the news. I went through the whole process with my family. I mean, for a very long time, it was just my parents and I that knew about it, and then other extended family. And also, I had a best friend at the time who also was going with me through it. So it's a big thing. And I mean, I remember even through the whole process that my dad, the one question that he asked me was that um, he said to me, so how do you feel? about it, what do you identify as? And I said, I identify as a woman, female. And he said, well, you'll always be my little girl. Hardly surprising when you look at Sharon. Anatomically and physically, from the outside, totally female. And for me, I had no clue that I was intersex. And even with me, my identity, my gender identity, always been female, grew up, um, as a girl, was raised as a girl, was bought dolls to play with, <laughs> and that sort of thing. So grew up wearing pink and growing hair and all of that. So it was, that, that was just my normal. For both of them, the biggest challenge has been how it's affected their sense of self. One of the biggest challenges that intersex people have is the actual emotional and mental well-being. Because for a very long time, being raised as either male or female or also not being certain of your gender identity and to discover something such as this changes a lot of things about yourself. I mean, the way you see yourself and the way how you interact with others and how you um, react with, I mean, in, 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 in engage with the world around you. Many people may have chosen to shrink away from the gaze of the world, but Sharon entered beauty contests. She won various titles, including Miss Mamelodi Sundowns, and was a runner-up in the Miss South Africa pageant in 2016. The judges knew at the time, and I told them about that, um, but it wasn't something that was very public. Then the one time we, I was having a conversation with my friends, and we were actually talking about LGBTI, and they said, okay, well then what is I? And I just said, okay, well, this is what intersex is, and I explained it. And um, a friend of mine said a very uninformed comment. I can't remember what it was, but I remember at the time that I was like, actually, no, this doesn't sit well with me. But I think I thought that if I'm here as an intersex person, my friends don't know that I'm intersex, um, then such comments as what's being said out there, then what must it feel like for another person who's intersex and might be on the receiving end of this? That was the catalyst for her to break her silence. She wrote a blog and posted her story on social media. I posted, I think, on my Instagram and Facebook and Twitter account, and then I wrote like three blog posts after that. And the people that would privately contact me and say, this is what I'm going through, thank you so much for speaking about this, as I'm going through. And it's just that I think for a very long time, 
<clears throat> excuse me, you feel like there's something wrong um, or you feel like there's something broken or you're not perfect or whatever. And in that way, it's that, that's not the case at all. And it's a very lonely process. Sharon has since found a group of intersex people from around the world and they communicate daily. It's been amazing to find people like myself and you actually realize that in finding those people that are like yourself, you actually realize how different you are, just like everyone else. And that's the whole thing about diversity and uniqueness, that our uniqueness, that's what makes us the same. In rural areas, it is very difficult for parents to access the right care and to come to grips with the condition. Dimagazzo and Sharon have become advocates for intersex rights. Most of the time you, you hear about infanticide and those stories and it's quite sad. But I mean, when you look at it and actually if we as a country and government and the medical, I mean, the medical fraternity and intersex activists as a whole can go into these areas and actually educate those kind of people to actually say that this is not a bad omen, this is not an evil thing, this is a, this is the little human being that deserves the right to life. Sharon faces some of her own personal hurdles, but she says she's taking it one day at a time. There's no biological clock that I'm racing against. By the time if I choose to have kids, then I'll be choosing with my own choosing. And by the time that I get married, which I really want to get married, that I will, I, I will do it at my own time. Both women realize that it's a complex condition and that being intersex means different things depending on how it manifests. Even with intersex that you'd have so many different conditions under the umbrella of intersex that even under those conditions you also have different variations of the condition. So no two cases are the same. Through the research that we're doing with other intersex, there's 40 types, various of intersex people and there's still more even. Dr. Siegel, a pediatric endocrinologist, says intersex births are a lot more common than people think. That happens to about 1 in 1,500 deliveries. And a male, male baby born with a completely not normal genitalia, so that could be hypospadias, undescended testes, that's 1 in 100. So it's common. He says the causes are often a combination of genetic and environmental influences. To be able to create a little baby boy or a little girl, you need to have a whole bunch of genes which are switched on at the right time, doing the job they're supposed to do, which then creates your internal genital structures, your gonads, and sets you up for creating hormones. And then you have to have all the enzymes, which are all coded for by genes, that then make the product. So does it make testosterone? Does it make estrogen? Does it make all the intermediate steps of producing those hormones? He says the biggest challenge at birth is social pressures, adding to parental anxiety. Then you get to go to school and you can't go to a normal bathroom because you need to sit on the toilets and how am I going to dress? And then also from about three years of age, you get gender identity starting to form. Just think of track star Costa Semenya. Her gender identity has been under scrutiny in recent months. She has never openly identified as intersex, but many people speculate if her high testosterone levels aren't linked to an intersex condition. It's something that follows you through life. Dimagazzo is hanging on to her green barcode ID book for exactly that reason. They've introduced um, the new card ID and I still keep my green book. I love my green book because it only states Dimagazzo, Amanda Sibidi and my ID number. It doesn't state whether I'm a female or male. So I can't, I can't go have a card that says I'm an F knowing very well I'm not an F. We address this with Chief Director of Birth Registrations at the Department of Home Affairs, Nomen Ramashi. Have you registered some children as other or intersex in the past? No, we haven't uh, done that as yet. But he says that does not mean that the department won't consider it. Currently, that's what is in the system, uh, as you put it, male or female. Uh, but I think uh, it's not really um, an issue that we can say we cannot do. We just need a bit of time and research 
um, as well as the amendment of our legislations and the systems, we can be able to do that. The I in my life, when I found out that I'm an intersex, I started realizing, feeling that I, for me, it always stood for being invisible, invisible or ignored. Abram says he and his wife were given no choice 34 years ago. They were told to decide and go ahead with the operation. But Dimagatsa says she wishes they hadn't listened. Let your child grow until they have a choice to say, Mama, I'm going to keep them both. Or, Mama, I'm going to remove a penis. Mama, I'm going to remove a vagina. They have a right. Don't take that right away from them. This was affirmed by the Malta Declaration in 2013, which is aimed at ending discrimination and the right to bodily integrity and autonomy for intersex individuals the world over. Declarations such as the Malta Declaration are huge leaps in terms of intersex rights because more often than not when surgeries were made um, they were made prematurely but then also a lot of the times the wrong gender assignment was done. Dr. Siegel admits that there is a movement that is delaying the decision and even deferring it to the child. Doing surgery when you're three means that you're committing a child of three to having genital penetration and dilatations on an ongoing basis until they're teenage, and I'm not so sure that's a, the right thing to do to a three-year-old. It should be a collective decision. I mean, the surgeon still has the expertise. They went to school for that. They have the, ex the medical and scientific expertise of what is currently happening. But then the, the parents are still going to go home with the child and have to raise the child. But at the end of the day, the child is the one that's going to live in that body. Dima Gatso is a living example. So what make you, why remove the penis? And hey, I turn out to be lesbian today. Why, what happened? You know, why did you guys make that decision for me? You know, sometimes I keep asking myself, you know, nobody asked my permission. Instead, experts suggest parents come up with a plan and try access doctors who have a holistic approach to the condition. You want everybody on the same page, even if that same page is, we we don't know where we're playing, but we know we're playing in this box more or less, and let's see what happens over time. And I think the most important thing is go to a specialist center where they know how to do the test. And a lot of the tests have to be done at the right time and in the right sequence to give you the answers. And if you miss that boat, testing becomes much more challenging down the line. One of Dimagot's biggest challenges was always, would she ever find love? You know, my mom always said to me growing up, you know, Dimagot, until you find somebody who, when you are with, you are you, then we have found the right one. And with me, I'm like, hey, where do you find somebody like that where you can still be yourself around that person and I'm me? But she did find love. Today, she's engaged to two women. They live together in this house in Fosloras. It's not a threesome. We're not, it's not like the three of us are in love. You know, they, I'm in love with both of them and both of them are in love with me, yeah. It's not that when I'm not there, they are both in a relationship. No, they're both in a relationship with me or I'm in a relationship with them. And Sharon has this advice for parents of an intersex baby. And in all honesty, it's just like genetics and the way that it was supposed to happen and you did nothing wrong. And your baby is, your baby is still your baby. And the best thing that you can do is love them and encourage them and support them. As a proud intersex polyamorous woman, Dimagatsa Sibidi is blazing her own trail. She has only one wish. I pray for the world to come to that time where, you know, it's as if you are giving birth to a boy or a girl. Same excitement, same plans, you know? And when you're a parent, when parents give birth to an intersex, knowing that, you know, it's my unique child. I know she's different, and being different, she's going to make, or he's going to make it, my child is going to make a difference.